Try this for big, muscular, strong legs. Push the sled every single day. Ooh, I was just gonna, every day. I was just going to jump on the bandwagon with that. I saw yeah. Doug doing it yesterday, and uh, he said he felt great. Yep. And I know that's been like you've like completely drop squats and deads right now or what did you what did you replace it with what? so um so before i would incorporate you know very very variations of squats either the belt squat or traditional squats or i do lunges um deadlifts i'll still throw in here and there but pretty i don't do them super super often these days and what i did was i just said you know let me just see what happens if i push the sled every single day because really if you think about it when you're driving the sled it works the entire leg, including the calves. Right. And this is where it came from. I noticed my calves were kind of growing a little bit. And I hadn't really changed my calf training at all. I'm like, what's going on? And then I said, oh, it's got to be the sled. Because when I pushed the sled, especially when I first started pushing the sled frequently, I would notice my feet and my calves would kind of start to get fatigued. And so one of the side effects was my calves and my feet started feeling really strong. I said, let me, let me keep doing this and see what happens. And my legs... Are, are developing well, and I have no pain, no aches and pains. My body, my joints feel really good. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because, actually, I'm pretty sure it's because of one of the quote-unquote weaknesses of driving the sled is actually one of its strengths. Because it, it eliminates the eccentric motion, right? Yeah. So you don't have any of the eccentric portion of the exercise. Yeah, so when you do it, for people who don't understand what Adam's talking about, when you do a rep, you know, you have the concentric portion of the rep, right? Which is where you're lifting the weight. So that's a, a positive part of the rep. Then you have the pause, which would be isometric. And then you have the lowering part, which is the eccentric or the negative. And studies will show that the eccentric is most responsible. They're all responsible for muscle growth and strength. But the eccentric builds more muscle, causes more muscle damage, causes more soreness. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are like, well... Needs you know, more recovery. Yeah, pushing the sled then isn't going to be a great muscle builder because it doesn't have... The eccentric, it's all positive, right? It's all it's all concentric uh, contractions. However, which is true, so I think on a rep for rep basis, it's probably not going to build as much muscle as squats or whatever. But if you look at that and think of it as a strength, which you just said, Justin, which is, I'm I'm not going to need nearly as much recovery. Yeah, I can do this every single day, not get sore, and really send this really frequent muscle building signal to my lower body and train the entire leg from my foot all the way up. It's funny to, to me that these hypertrophy trolls can't get that in their skull, yeah. um, that it has a lot of value uh, to add in addition to squats and to um, all these, these other exercises that we do for, you know, building our, our leg muscles in particular, but like, yeah, gaining more strength and especially in the foot, like it, you'd mentioned yeah. too, for me, like feeling more secure, more stable in my squats, it makes a massive difference in, in terms of performance. And now I can add more load, which then, you know, adds to that systemic effect where I do build, you know, substantially more muscle because now I'm more secure, more stabilized when I'm squatting down. I can I can actually load more. I, I want to unpack something that you said uh, about the difference between the uh, eccentric portion and then the concentric portion. Uh, traditionally, it's known that the eccentric portion of the exercise is what builds the most muscle. Yeah. Now, do you think that a, a big portion of that is because traditionally the eccentric portion of the exercise is always the slower part. Like you, you take two to four seconds to lower a weight down where the concentric portion of exercise many times is only one second. And so do you think that a lot of that, that benefits is just purely the time under load during that, that portion of the movement. <sighs> That's and, a good and, and, and if you were to compare, like, like let's just take total time and I'm going to make up these numbers just to, to make my point. Uh, you do a, a, a barbell back squat for five reps and the total time is 10 seconds in the eccentric portion mm -hmm. of the, you know, let's just say, even though it's probably wrong, 10 seconds. You go drive the sled now and there's no eccentric portion, but you have a total of 30 seconds of concentric uh, work to drive the sled across the gym. So the total amount of time that that muscle is being worked is, is equated to the same or potentially even more in that the driving sled. And do you, you think that that may be a factor in why mm. you are seeing such great results in comparison to what we know is the king of all exercises for building your legs? It could contribute. It's for a sure. good question because we, we can't really, we still haven't really determined why the eccentric or the lowering part of an exercise 
quote unquote, builds more muscle. And I, I want to be clear before I continue, they all build muscle. So right. people get confused as they say- Isometrics build muscle. Yeah, so the I, oh, eccentric builds the most muscle. So therefore, concentric and isometric looks like a waste of time. No, 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 they all build muscle. But if you compare them head to head, eccentric tends to build more. But eccentric also comes along with more damage and more recovery. And right. you try, try a, a negatives only workout or force negatives or- where you're going, you're going to get super sore and it's going to take longer to recover. So there's that, that drawback, right? But as far as time under tension is concerned, it's interesting because what I've done with the sled is I've done it many different ways. So it's not like I do the exact same thing every day. Sure. So some days what I'll do is I'll, I'll load the sled and I'll push it as fast as I can. I'm not running, right. but I'm trying to go fast. But it's explosive versus long, slow, grinding strides. Right, or right. or 30-second rest versus rest as long as I can versus half the length of the grass with heavy, heavy, heavy weight versus lightweight. Let's see how fast I can get it across. So it's like a whole bunch of different varieties that I'm yeah. doing. So there's there's the, the portion that I was asking that I think has to be a contributor Um uh, how how direct it is is in, in relation. It might be right, right. I think that, and then the other contributor you have to think is because you've lifted for twenty plus years, you've you've built a substantial substantial amount of weight or strength and 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 size in your legs, and all it takes is some good stimulation to to maintain that mass. I would think that that also plays oh, for sure. Like, like if you had like a kid who's seventeen, two kids, seventeen, never lifted before. And uh, one kid, I get to do nothing but barbell squats with. The other kid, all I do is drive the sled with. I would still speculate that we would see significantly more gains in the barbell back squatter. But now take those same two kids 20 years later who have both built a lot of muscle by doing all different exercises and then allow them just to drive the sled. And they probably could would. could be. But here's the other side of it. First off, it's always never, it's, we're not making the either or argument, right? Right. They all course, have value. So course. I don't want to I don't want to get people get confused from me say that, you know, this exercise is better than all the others. Don't do anything else. The best results you're going to get are from doing a, a wide variety of different <clears throat> movements, doing eccentric, concentric, isometric contractions, uh, split stance exercises, bilateral. So all that stuff has lots of value. But here's the deal. I think if you compare uh, one kid doing barbell back squats three days a week to one kid driving the sled three days a week, you're going to see more gains with the back squat. However, here's the difference. The sled, you can do way more often than squatting. Right. Way more often than squatting. In terms of volume and frequency, you, you can really up I, I bet you I could drive the sled twice a day if I wanted to yeah. and feel totally fine. I feel zero, nothing in my joints whatsoever yeah. versus when I squat or deadlift. And I'll, I'll, this is a statement I'll make right now. I guarantee you it'll be the last leg exercise I do yeah. uh, as I get older. As I get older, I bet you that'll be the thing that I do the vast majority of just because it feels so easy and safe on the body, even at high intensities. Yeah. So th my point with this is tr there's tremendous value. And when you look at an exercise, look at its weakness and see how you can make that a strength. And so the weakness with the sled is you don't do the eccentric. So how can we yeah. make that a strength? Oh, I can do this every well, single day. It's interesting to speculate on you know the value of that eccentric and what difference that is in in, in comparison. Like so, what kind of different force demand that places on uh, the muscles? And, and so that being that you're fighting uh, forces that are actually pulling away, uh, say they're gravitational or say you know the load itself. Um, you know, you're fighting that on top of also contracting versus you contracting and, and be, and then let, you can let off at any point and then there's no more force demand. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, in terms of like that being communicated, I haven't heard anything really break that down. Yeah. Well, well there also, then there's a third component that I think that makes a, a big difference in this case for you also is that if you were to compare driving the sled and squats to you specifically, I think that driving the sled is more novel to your body than sure. since squats. So if you were a sled driver your whole life and then now you're like really starting to squat, totally. you would mm -hmm. see. So I think there's I think that's what makes it so powerful for you is that there's 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 those three big uh, elements that make it uh But I'll say this though, my legs, my upper legs I should say are pretty well developed. I mean, I, I think it's you guys know this, it's like the one body part I have that I, I could really build a lot of muscle. For me to get them to grow. Um, I, I know what I'd have to do to really make them grow yeah. if I wanted to make them grow. I'm surprised that they're growing. Yeah. For, and I know it's the frequency. It's you don't think so many reps. You don't think they're, they're growing beyond a size though that you've already had them before. 
Uh, they're, they're, at this body weight, um, like they're not that's the biggest. Right? Yeah, I don't think they're the biggest they've ever. No, that's tough because I'm also 43. Right, right. So I, I, I mean, I a lot of that you're 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 bringing back muscle that you you've 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 had before. The thing that Justin you said that I think is really interesting, that's really important to that, and and you alluded to it also with how your joints feel. I, I would think that one of the most uh, damning things that the, the that happens to the body from like squats is the 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 change of direction of load always right so oh, the, yeah. the the eccentric That's where you get hurt. right mm -hmm. the eccentric portion and then, and then switch and then switch in the other direction with 300 pounds like right. that has just got to be the 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 sheer physics of that have to be one of the mm -hmm. the, the most stressful things that you uh, that you apply to the body where that's completely eliminated with the driving the sled you were just going forward to your point as soon as you let off it, you let it's off it's also like, so um it's also low skill driving the sled is a low skill oh, yeah. meaning so i loved it for clients. great for kids anybody yeah. right if like a first time yeah. person exercising you can have them push a light sled i can't have or any joint issues like totally yeah, it's beautiful for that so it's just it's my point with all this is that the sled has been thrown into the like sports athletic realm and people who just want to develop their muscles don't typically look at the sled and say oh that's a good Mm -hmm. Muscle building exercise, false. Yeah, I actually, great I ironically exercise. used it more yeah. during bodybuilding than I ever have in my life. I remember you saying that. Yeah, I used it all the time. I love the drags. I love pushes, and just like you said, some days it would be light and, and and more explosive. Other days it would be this grinding strength. Other days I would be dragging it slow. Sometimes I'd drag it up high. Sometimes I'd squat down and like almost simulate a leg extension. I drop my hips down like if they, oh, if they and were drag right it back. Yeah, and drag it back oh, that's as normal. if I was doing a, uh -huh. a, a leg extension. And I mean, I remember after I found that, and I believe again it was working with Justin. I never did leg extensions again. Mm -hmm. I was like, why would I ever do a leg extension if I could pretty much emulate the same thing in a, in a in a where I'm actually moving? It's far more functional. I'm going to burn more calories. I'm going to build more strength from it, and it just it felt better doing that than yeah, sitting there, in a machine. There's also some clues too when you look at the um the, the the strength training realm of athletes that train with the highest frequency uh, of all you know strength athletes, which are Olympic lifters. Uh, Olympic lifters generally lift more often. Than any other lifter, they they train. I mean, you know, gosh, several times a day they'll practice their lifts. But Olympic lifts, many of their lifts don't include the negative portion of a repetition. They 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 throw a weight up and they drop it. If you ever watch Olympic lifters lift, they don't do lots of negatives. And they might practice with squats, but even their squats, the negative is minimized. You ever watch an Olympic lifter squat versus a power lifter or a bodybuilder? Olympic lifter, like they go in the hole and they bounce back up. Now I'm not recommending that. I think it's a very high skill. Movement, but my point with this is, when you eliminate or or somewhat limit the damaging effects of the eccentric portion of a rep, that means you could dramatically increase the volume and frequency. So it's it's like yes, eccentric portions of reps are very important. I'm not saying remove those, but if you did somewhat limit those or remove those, like you would with a sled or if you're doing some type of an Olympic lift or maybe even modify other exercises to do so, you could dramatically increase the amount of times that you practice that exercise, which comes with its own benefits. Um, and it, the benefits are strength, muscle, performance, all that stuff. It's really interesting to me because, I, like I said, um, I did it every single day. I just got the sled. I did three sets, three to five sets every single day. And every day I felt good. I didn't feel yeah. like, oh, I got to go easy today. Like you do, like I would if I tried to squat every day. Yeah, yeah. I just said, well, I feel really interested. My knees feel good. My hips feel good. Ankles, everything felt really, really good. And it's such an easy tool to use. It's really, uh, really interesting. Well, you know that I hurt my hamstring the other day. So I, and I saw Doug doing the sled after you and I'm like, oh, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. So I'll report back. Because I haven't done that. I don't think I've I've actually just like when I did the sled a lot. I was doing it. In, you added it. In, in yeah, I've added it to increase volume. I it was my way of okay. I can't squat or deadlift anymore this week. It's too taxing, uh, but I still want to keep working my legs. And so the sled the sled drags and pushes became something I used a lot in bodybuilding. But I haven't done it like this like right now. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that in replace of like some of my leg training and see see how see how. Doug, it goes. are you how, how what day are you on now? Because you just started doing it every day. Yeah, it's probably about four or five days now. And what do you do? You feel okay? You feel I feel great. Uh, I mean, I definitely can tell that I've been doing something. Mm -hmm. My body is definitely. I, I feel it. In my muscles. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things though had happened for me is I'd hurt my knee a little bit, mm -hmm. and so I was still squatting, but I had a little bit of knee pain. And the nice thing about this is my knee is just like perfectly fine. Yeah, it'll be the exercise I do when I'm in my 80s. I guarantee it. It'll be yeah. like the one leg exercise that I'll always be doing because it just doesn't hurt anything. 
Yeah, you know? it's it's beautiful now. They have those torque sleds, and you have ones with wheels, and you can adjust the uh, you know the the tension on them, so you can really um, make it a lifestyle thing. Like I could just take it out of my garage and I just move it around, and just like I would do anything else, it's just like a daily activity. How does it feel? I've never used a torque sled. It's great, man. Really? It's, is yeah, it is a torque sled the one with the the, the big like four wheel wheels on uh-huh. it? Yeah, those look cool. Yeah, yeah, and you can adjust and, and add some more resistance, so it kind of like um, adds. I don't know if it's like a braking or some kind of like a. Um, yeah, because I used to take the sled, the regular one that dragged drag you know, outside my house. <laughs> Such an and asshole. Get dirty looks from five my o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> sparking. Yeah, Could you imagine everything that? sparking everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? I did asshole? that down with the with the high school kids down at the uh, um, the, the campus, and it was like this beautiful uh, concrete area and everything, and like they they had like some plastic pieces on the bottom initially so it was like okay i could push it and then those came off and then it was just pure sparks and like we just put marks everywhere i'm like we can't do this we got to order some of these torque sleds because <laughs> i'm gonna get in trouble with the administration <laughs> 